Calculating the pH of a weak base is a little bit more involved than the weak acid, but it's pretty straightforward. Here is a 0.1 mole per liter solution of sodium acetate. Find the pH. Well, okay, some students say, Mr. Lawyer, if it's just acetate that's the base ion, why don't you just say acetate? Look, all solutions are a positive ion, a cation, and an anion together. Now, the sodium is not going to be part of the reacting of the solution, reacting part of the solution, and so we just dissociate that off and keep the acetate ion. You can look on your acid base chart on the on the chart that has acids down the left side and all the conjugate base ions down the right. You'll find acetate on there by itself, CH3COO negative. And so we take that chemical, we put it in water, and we transfer a proton from the water, which now acts as the bronsted lowry acid, to this base, getting these two chemicals, all oh, that hydroxide ion. If we knew the concentration of hydroxide, we could find the pH. Yeah. And we know that this 0.1 mole per liter solution isn't going to break down to form 0.1 here because this is a weak base, not a strong base. And so therefore it uses X, and we know the drill. We're going to get 0.1 minus X here, X here, and X here. Now here's the thing that's different. We don't write Ka because it's not an acid. It's a weak base, this chemical, acetate ion. And so the Kb equals the concentration of those two products divided by the concentration of the reactant. Where do we get the Kb from? Well, this kind of chart has listed down the right hand side only values that are called Ka's. So acetic acid, the conjugate acid here of acetate ion, that actually has a Ka on the chart. But what's the Kb of its conjugate base? All you have to do is realize this, that if you have a weak acid, Ka, and its conjugate base, Kb, Multiplied together, they equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14, which is the Kw. And so, in order to get the Kb for this, we just take 1 times 10 to the negative 14 and divide it by the Ka to get the Kb, a rearrangement of this formula. So, this right here is the Kb. That's how we get it. You can just put that in normally or just write it like this. And that, of course, equals these two concentrations, which are x, divided by the 0.1 minus x. Now to finish, and there's the math there to get 5.55 times 10 to the negative 10. That equals x squared over 0.1. I disregarded the x because if you take the initial concentration of 0.1 and divide it by 10 to the negative 10, you get a number that's way bigger than 1,000. So you can disregard x here. Whenever the k value is very small, it doesn't dissociate very much in solution, that compound. So you can always disregard x when you're adding it to or subtracting it from some number. That times that, 5 times 5.6 5 essentially, times 10 to the negative 11. You take the square root to get x. What is x? Remember, x, now you've got to be careful, x is the hydroxide ion concentration, not the hydronium, because we're calculating the pH of a weak base. So we're finding it's hydroxide. Once you find that hydroxide ion in solution, 14 minus the negative log, or 14 plus the log, of the hydroxide ion concentration. Remember, the formula is the pH equals 14 minus the pOH. So this is the pOH part here. There's the hydroxide ion concentration. And you get 8.87, which sounds right because it's not a very highly concentrated type of weak base, so it's not going to have a very high pH, like a strong base would of that concentration, maybe 13 or 14, that's 8.87. Sounds good. If you got a pH of a weak base less than 7, you know you did it wrong, but I'm sure you'll do it right.